Today I'm in the absolutely stunning Kennel Vale down in Cornwall and in one week's time the rivers around here are going to be filled with contraptions made by students at a local university so they can see who can make the most power. They've been given a budget of £50 to see what they can make with scrap resources or things they can find cheaply available, though some of them will be doing it completely out of repurposed materials for free. This whole place is absolutely beautiful and contains a lot of amazing waterways and rivers that contain an incredible amount of power if the students can harness it correctly. I actually did this project when I studied down here about seven years ago, so it's great to see it still going. Kennel Vale still has some remains of the old water wheels that were in operation to power mining activities as far back as 200 years ago. The site was Cornwall's leading gunpowder producer until it was shut in 1912. Okay, enough about this beautiful location that the teams are going to be testing in. Let's see some of their designs and how they're getting on with the building. I left Kennel Vale to visit the University of Exeter's campus, wondering why I ever left this incredible corner of the UK. Specifically, I went to the reef where the students were already hard at work on their designs. I even saw some projects from previous years like this interesting looking Tesla turbine. For the competition, there are six teams of students, each with about three or four students in them. I asked them at the start of the week to sketch their design so I could see how that compared to what was actually made at the end of the week, and here is what they came up with. Group 1 plans to create a turgo style turbine that will be formed primarily out of an old bicycle wheel. The wheel will lay on its side and have spoons attached to it so it can be spun from incoming jets of water. They plan to have two separate jets hitting it from each side to even out the torque and keep it balanced. The rotation will be transferred through a gearing system to the electric generator. To maximise sustainability and minimise costs, they are aiming to use a combination of materials they will find for free in skips, rubbish piles and free ads. The first stage of realising this vision was taking apart this poor old bicycle, which put up a bit of a fight due to the years of rust. After getting it apart, they secured the rear hub and sprocket to the generator. The team then riveted on some old spoons to the rim of the bike wheel, and it started to take shape as a turbine. Though one of the challenges with these projects is always getting the right amount of water to the turbine. They did have some long piping, but they had a feeling it was too narrow and would kill any pressure that they had got from the water dropping in height. I left them to get on with their building and would check up later in the week. Now let's see what group 2 came up with and what they drew for me at the start of the week. Group 2 is aiming to innovate by using a dam that will hold up the water upstream and build up pressure. The water will then flow down their pipe to a nozzle at the end which should increase the speed of the water into a powerful jet that will spin their turbine. The turbine design is a standard Pelton wheel with 3D printed buckets, which will transfer torque to the generator through a small pulley system. Group 2 had already made some good progress when I caught up with them and the dam was looking promising. They had even added a debris guard to the inlet which would minimise unwanted items coming into their pipe and clogging up the nozzle. The turbine system was still in its early stages but the pulley system was starting to take shape. Now let's have a look at Group 3's big ideas. The design from Group 3 is an Archimedes screw and is my personal favourite as it is what my group made when I did this challenge as a student. The screw blade will be made using old CDs bent and wrapped around an internal shaft. The shaft will be secured into a larger tube and mounted onto a wooden frame that will allow them to move the screw up and down to adjust the angle. They plan to have the generator at the top of the screw connected to the rotating shaft with water entering at an entrance just below it. In the workshop, they had a post hole boring attachment that they were using as inspiration for the screw's layout. After cutting some CDs, they started attaching them to the central shaft. However, they thought they felt too flimsy and weak, so were concerned the water might damage them. When I left them at this stage, they were looking at using acrylic discs, which could be heated and bent to the right shape. Now, here's a quick flashback to me when I was reminiscing on when I took part in this challenge. One thing I remember my team struggling with was getting the right amount of water into the turbine because not enough water and you won't get enough power, but too much water and it could be catastrophic. I remember ours, which was an Archimedes screw, being filled with water and weighing so much that it got flushed down the river and we had no way to stop it. We did eventually get it out, but the electronics weren't quite the same. Okay, enough of the past. Let's see what the next group were planning for their project. 
Group 4 are also planning to create a Pelton wheel turbine using 3D printed buckets attached in a circular formation. They are planning to directly attach the shaft to the generator without any additional gearing, and it will all be kept safe inside a sandwich box. The water will come in from a pipe that is collecting water upstream, directing a jet of water at the turbine using a nozzle. They are aiming to design for resilience, primarily using durable plastics as their building material. Unfortunately, when seeing how the build was going, Group 4 was having trouble getting the 3D printed buckets. This meant they had a limited amount of work they could do and had to trust their measurements and make the turbine stand without the turbine. All they had was a prototype turbine with one bucket attached and it had different dimensions to their final design. Fingers crossed they could get something together in time. Group 5 has one of the most ambitious plans. They are hoping to build a wooden structure around a Kaplan turbine. The aim of the structure is to generate a vortex flow from the incoming water at the top, which will cause the turbine to rotate with increased torque. The generator will then be mounted above the wooden box and attached directly to the shaft that the turbine will spin. They will be making the Kaplan turbine from scratch and I can't wait to see if they pull this one off. The initial focus for group 5 was the box and the channel that would redirect the water onto the Kaplan turbine. It was feeling pretty solid, however there were some issues with small leaks when they gave it a test run. Whilst they figured out a solution for these leaks, plans were forming for the Kaplan turbine blades. A Kaplan turbine does technically have adjustable blades, but we'll let them off this time and I was excited to see how it was going to come together by the end of the week. Finally, Group 6 will also be using a Pelton wheel with 3D printed buckets and a pipe to collect water which will shoot at the turbine through a nozzle made of an old water bottle. Their generator will be directly connected to the spinning shaft and their unique angle is that all of the wood will be freely sourced from discarded offcuts. When I saw the build taking shape, I instantly loved the look of the wooden pallet at the base. They had drilled holes into the upright section to allow the height of the turbine to be adjusted if needed. Adjustability is an extremely useful thing as the water in the river may not have the same flow as when they scoped out their sites in previous weeks. Unfortunately, the 3D printing for their buckets had just failed, and with lots of other groups needing the printer, they weren't sure if they would be able to finish everything in time. I then left the students to continue working on their designs throughout the rest of the week, so I could go off and do other work and a much needed ocean swim. Near the end of the week, I returned so I could see how the students were getting on. My first stop was to see Group 1 and check up on their visions of the bicycle wheel turbine. They had decided to abandon the narrow white pipe and were instead trying to use a massive one they found in a construction yard. They hoped it would give them enough water for two high pressure jets strong enough to move their turbine by hitting the spoons. One of the most important factors for these hydro turbines is getting the water to drop a significant distance from source to turbine as this gives the high hydraulic heads or pressures needed. After leaving half of their team to finalise the piping, I checked out their turbine one last time, as it was also starting to take shape. The bearings from the bike offered low resistance, and they could easily transfer torque from the turbine to the generator using a bicycle chain. The next time we'll see this, it will be in Kennel Vale. Group 2 were making some good progress on their Pelton wheel design too, they had managed to 3D print the buckets of their turbine and attach it to a laser cut acrylic disc. It was looking promising, though it did feel like they had some friction in their turbine, possibly due to the tension in the belts. We'll have to see if this causes issues during testing. The next group to check up on was the innovative Archimedes screw from group 3. They had ditched the plans to use acrylic blades and gone back to the CD idea. They doubled up the CDs to increase the strength and wrapped them in duct tape, which provided a strong, slinky type thing. By using this black internal shaft, they were also able to clamp the screw blades in place with a slightly wider white shaft that had the spiral cut into it, which I thought was a great piece of engineering. Using an acrylic cross and some bearings, they were able to mount the screw into the housing pipe and it was nearly ready to take to the river. In an incredible turn of events, Group 4's project was looking back on track. 
When I last saw them, they didn't even have a turbine, but now, nearing the end of the week, they'd managed to get everything printed and attached together. It was looking promising as they tested it using a hose pipe outside the lab. <laughs> yeah. This really showcases how good a Pelton wheel can be when you have enough pressure to get a high speed water jet into the turbine. The Kaplan build of Team 5 was starting to match the initial design too. They had cut four blades from thin acrylic and secured them to a hub made of PVC pipe. This was attached to a shaft for power offtake and the top of the shaft was narrowed using a lathe to make it easy to attach to the generator. Using some wooden supports, it was assembled into the main box and everything was ready for the river. And finally, Group 6. When I last spoke to them, they were having some issues with 3D printing, which was stopping them from realising their initial design. Thankfully, they were able to print off the extra buckets in time using green filament, which allowed them to easily see the speed of the turbine as it was spinning, which was a nice touch. They did still have to attach their generator, which didn't have any additional gearing. This did make me wonder whether they would reach high enough speeds to get the generator generating enough voltage. But the time for hypothesizing was over and it was time to see them in the river. Okay, so I've just got to Kennel Vale where all the students are gonna be testing. Um, I'm running a little bit late because it took me longer to get out of the Airbnb than expected, but we're here and I can't wait to see some of these turbines spinning. Due to some recent rain, the river was flowing powerfully and the test equipment was ready to test each of the students' turbines. It's had some bulbs on it to see whether the turbines produced enough voltage, current, and therefore power to turn any of them on. I can't lie, the first testing didn't quite go to plan. The aim for group one to have the double nozzle shooting water at the turbine turned out to be a bit too ambitious, as the pipes didn't provide any usable water jets. They instead tried to place the whole thing in the river, but with water coming from both sides, it pushed the spoons equally on each side and didn't manage to turn the turbine. This was a shame as I thought it had a lot of promise, but hopefully the other teams would fare better. Group 2 got on a lot better with their testing and the dam from their original design was being put to action. The blockade prevented water flowing down their pipe during the setup, which allowed them to prop it up using wooden blocks and get a consistent flow out of the nozzle. However, there wasn't much drop in height from the dam to the nozzle, so the water flow was still relatively slow. They did, however, get the turbine spinning, even if it was working as more of a water wheel than a Pelton wheel due to the slow flow rate. They weren't able to get any of the bulbs to light up when they connected it, but it was a good effort overall. Group 3 had some initial difficulties deploying their Archimedes screw made from old pipes and CDs. Initially putting the stand into the fast flowing water caused the whole thing to get pushed down the river, an issue I remembered well from my time building a similar project. Thankfully, after moving to a new location and adding some sandbags, the screw was in place and they were able to start directing water into it. An old swim cap protected the electronics at the top, and even though we couldn't see anything, the turbine was spinning and delivered enough power to light up a bulb. A fantastic effort from Group 3. I promised the university that I wouldn't share any of the specific power outputs from the turbines to keep it fair on current and future students, so hopefully using the bulbs is a good proxy. After a promising test run at the lab, Group 4 was all set to bring their visions to life. The trusty Pelton wheel design was ready to go, however the same issue of getting a fast moving jet of water to the turbine was present here too. Nevertheless, using some nearby logs, the pipe was positioned and the turbine got spinning. Again, it was more of a water wheel and there wasn't quite enough speed to get any lights to turn on, but with a little more water pressure, this could have made some considerable power. Group 5's Kaplan in a box was one I was definitely looking forward to seeing, not least because I didn't know how they would even fit it in the river. But after some careful placement, the system was in and a pipe directed water into the wooden spiral. I'm not sure what benefit this really gave in the end, but it did look pretty interesting. In my opinion, the best work from this team was definitely on the turbine itself, though unfortunately it didn't spin for very long and definitely didn't manage to produce enough electricity for any bulbs. Finally, Group 6 tested their Pelton wheel. A good positioning enabled the pipe to redirect water to the nozzle, but with just a small downward slope on the pipe, it was a similar story as the other Pelton wheels. 
The relatively slow water did turn the turbine and it looked great, but the lack of speed meant not enough power was generated to light any bulbs. It was great to spend some time down in Cornwall working with the University of Exeter and a massive thanks to them and specifically the Renewable Energies Department for letting me come down and record for the week. Practical challenges like this are such a great way of taking lessons learnt from the classroom and applying them to the real world. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. It's free and helps the channel a lot. You might also like some of my other videos like this one on the world's most efficient heat pumps. I've got plans to do more of these out of the office type videos, so definitely keep an eye out for those in the future. And as always, thanks for watching.